gonna be a hard video to make. Let me explain. It will be hard because I'm discussing narrative or how to create narrative in a board game. You see, narrative is such a complex and delicate experience to simulate during a gameplay because it depends so much on several layered elements of a game, all working together seamlessly enough to create something that is greater than their sum parts, something with a greater meaning and feeling behind it, a story. That is the sprinkled essence and power of narrative. When designing for narrative, you are designing for the possibilities of unique stories emerging from your game. Any time and every time someone plays it. With good narrative comes fond memories of the journey that your players take through your game. Like I said, this is hard to pull off in a board game, but in this video, I'm going to show you how the game that I'm designing just might do it. Now, I want you to be on the same page with me before I start showing you how I think my game will create an interesting narrative. So here's what my game includes, just so you're caught up. Right now, my game includes a blank board of open hex spaces. You know, big enough to put my hopes and dreams. That brings me to the unique hex tiles with explorable locations and actions. Hopefully, players will learn to love these. I already do. Cards, the kind that you can find in an adventure deck. These will probably be the main driver of narrative for my game, but I'm also very confident that there are other elements of the game that will stand on their own in how they help create narrative. Dice, possibly two, maybe just one. At least one dice for the nighttime events. This dice only has good things on it, nothing bad, only benefits. During the nighttime phase, one player rolls this dice and all players find out what the benefit or opportunity is for that phase. Individual player goals. These are the winning conditions of the game. If a player achieves all of their personal goals in the game, they win and they go home satisfied and feeling accomplished because it may have taken a long time to get to the top of the mountain, but at least they set a goal and they did it. And by golly, they did it. This is the ensemble of mechanisms, components, and rules I have so far. They're incomplete for sure, but they're a good start and definitely a solid foundation for the development process to come. There are other games that deserve mentioning before I get into the narrative of my game, especially since these published games have similarities in the theme and mechanisms, and since it's felt like I've been talking around them for the last few videos without meaning to. These games also offer narrative, so it'll be good to distinguish how my game creates narrative in a different way. I've already discussed Discover Lands Unknown in a different video, so I won't cover it here. There's even another game in the same exploration genre called Seventh Continent. This game also uses a numbered adventure deck that helps to deliver events, items, and story beats. I'm not smart enough to mastermind a 400 card event deck in order to create narrative, so there shouldn't be any threat of overlap here. The next game has been brought up the most due to its apparent similar theme to mine. That game is Parks. Parks is a great game, and I know Keymaster Games just released a new expansion for Parks because people loved it so much. I honestly should have Parks in my collection because the theme is right up my alley. I actually used to work for a college program that took students on outdoor trips for hiking, camping, and climbing. I'm an outdoorsy person at heart, and I love traveling to national parks and experiencing what the outside world has to offer. But maybe that's why I haven't gravitated towards the gameplay of parks yet. Because even though the amazing art does everything it can to illustrate an atmosphere of hiking through beautiful national parks and getting players to cherish the great outdoors, the gameplay is more abstract than what I would want to play on a regular basis. Parks is more about set collection and moving your hikers along a linear track to take actions before they run out. The game works really well, but maybe it doesn't go far enough in the adventure aspect for me. The last game I'll mention is Robinson Crusoe, another well-known game. Gotta admit, I've never played this one, and once I got that first message that it was apparently similar in how it uses hex tiles for exploration, I got a little nervous. But then I remembered, I'm not designing a Robinson Crusoe game. I'm designing my game. And that was enough to put me at rest. Because remember, I'm aiming for a specific feeling in my game. And that feeling is not about being stranded on a deserted island forced to survive the elements. My game is not about survival. Instead, it's about thriving through the wilderness, feeling emboldened to explore, and charting your own path towards completing goals that you've set out for yourself. It is about challenge by choice. My game may seem visually similar because it uses hex tiles, dice, and cards, but I can promise you my game will feel very different. Those of you in the comments who've helped point out these games as good references, thank you. Seriously, it is incredibly handy when I ask for leads and suggestions that could help in my game design, 
and you guys deliver. You're awesome, you're appreciated, and you probably know more games than me, so keep it up. But if you think that I'm designing a game that's already out there right now, you better let me know right now. Okay, let's get into it. I'm claiming that my game will create narrative or perceivable story arcs for players to enjoy individually or collectively through the gameplay. I believe that my game would create narrative by the way tiles, cards, and dice are played. My players should see that there are layered events happening in the game that tie together through separate mechanisms and components, all reinforcing the theme of exploration and adventure. If everything works right, then players will spend more time in the game thinking narratively and less time crunching the numbers in their head in order to win. Like I've said before, I really enjoy the game Tapestry, but I've even posted it in the past about how Tapestry makes me feel less like I'm building a civilization and more like I'm playing leapfrog along the four development tracks. I'm spending so much time focusing on how to maximize my turns that I often forget about the theme entirely. It isn't until I sit back in my chair to grab a talkie when I'm reminded, oh, there's narrative in this game. My civilization can now reach outer space, but by that time it's too late. I've spent the majority of the time crunching the numbers instead of exercising my imagination. Here's a few examples how this could work in my game. Example number one, my game will have geographical exploration. First of all, in my game, players will be exploring a top-down geographical region of the mountains, forests, and trails. Each turn, they will have the choice to move their little hiker one of six directions, either traveling through known areas of the landscape or blazing their own trail through unexplored areas of the map. Players will remain conscious of the geography of the map throughout the game because it's right there in front of them the whole time, and they're making decisions every single turn to either stay or explore into known and unknown areas. By the end of the game, players should be able to look back where they started the game, what happened to them along the way, and where they are now. Sort of like Breath of the Wild, players may remember all the locations they visited and what happened to them on each point. Example number two, the cards and items. Like many other games, I would love for my players to find interesting things that would help them in the game. I have an idea that players will come across items on the cards that they're drawing from the adventure deck, but those cards which give a description of the item correlate to a physical token that you will place next to your player map. So players can easily see the tokens and abilities all other players have in front of them. Let's say you draw an item card, and that item is a functional walkie-talkie radio. Since you found a walkie-talkie, you place a token next to your player mat so you don't forget, and you rely on the card to tell you what the item allows you to do. What if walkie-talkies allow you to communicate to other hikers in the region that also have walkie-talkies? And just like Delilah in the video game Firewatch, you are able to get advice on how to safely navigate difficult terrain from any other hikers you can communicate to. You may have less compass tokens that limit your ability to ascend the mountain, but now you've found a radio that can take advantage of the compass tokens that other players have in front of them, pretending that you're radioing in the other player's hiker as a virtual trail guide, allowing you to benefit from the higher amount of compass tokens that that player has. Some players may feel frustrated that other players are taking advantage of their hard-earned knowledge, but the walkie-talkie's worth both ways. That player could eventually take advantage of your compass tokens later in the game. At any point, players could choose to discard their walkie-talkies, leaving them on the current hex space that they're on, and eliminating the chance for other players to radio in and get their secrets. Example number three, risk and lost items. The mountains are a dangerous place. Even at the base of a mountain, canopied by trees and vegetation can be precarious sometimes, depending on how steep the face is and how unstable the ground can be for secure footing. I want players to have a healthy fear of ascending the mountain in my game because that matches the reality of my theme. Remember, I'm not designing a survival game, so no one's gonna be dying from falling off the ridge of a mountain in my game. But there will be consequences if a player decides to start their ascension, committing to the risk risk of danger and they end up not making it. If they fail the attempt to ascend to the next available hex space, then they end their turn without progressing to another hex tile, and they are forced to lose one or two items they've found along the way. Pretty low stakes for falling down a mountain, right? 
Well, what if you desperately needed those items for future turns and now they've been lost to the discard pile? There may only be minimal ways to regain those tokens by exploring more and eventually coming across them again in the adventure deck. Oh, if only you would have waited before you had one more compass token and then you would have made it and not lost your dang walkie-talkie. You see how that could be a narrative moment? Yes, it might suck that you have less chance to win the game now, but it was your choice all along and you and the other players will remember that anticlimactic moment because it adds to the overall story arc in the game. Who knows, you might actually come back and win the game because you gained a resiliency point from that fall, making it easier to overcome similar challenges, and you eventually push through that adversity to accomplish your goals. I really hope my game can do something like that, uh, but we're still early in the stages and we're finding out on the go. And I haven't even play tested yet, so those are just ideas at this point. I have a longer road in front of me. But now we understand that creating narrative in a board game is largely about one, getting your players to spend more time using their imagination to make sense of what's happening in the game. And two, creating narrative is about layering experiences through the actions, components, and rules. And these layered experiences do not have to be linear. They can be seemingly sporadic with randomness to the highs and lows, as long as the players feel in control and they feel nostalgic when they look back on their journey. Ooh, nostalgia. Now there's another good feeling to aim in your game design. Let me know what you think about the narrative in my game so far. Your suggestions and ideas could influence the direction of my game design, and my game will likely be better for it. Second, shout out any games out there that you think have great narrative to them. They could be in a completely different genre than exploration slash adventure, but I'd love to hear how they create unique stories and tie in the theme in a narrative way. Lastly, if you're watching this, I would love for you to follow along in my game design journey. Feel free to subscribe and engage in the comments. I've been responding to everyone who takes time to do so, and it means a lot to me. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.